so I follow education research pretty closely and something I find interesting is that when an idea becomes really popular in the education sphere the first place you see it in the world is usually in like the toy aisle at Target like the first time I saw STEAM so STEM is science technology engineering and mathematics and when you put an A in that we'll get to it it's totally fine that's STEAM the first time I saw STEAM was in the toy aisle at Target when all the toys that used to say STEM learning STEM now they say STEAM learning STEAM, even though they're, they're the same toy. It's just that marketers are the first people to co-opt education buzzwords and just shove it into desperate parents' hands. Be like, you want your child to succeed, right? You better buy the STEAM toy. Like, look at this slime. It's educational. I bet there's a bucket of slime in this box and maybe a little piece of paper that gives you ideas on how to make it educational, but that's, that's not what an educational toy is. If something is going to be an educational toy, you need someone to have developed a learning plan. Like what are the expected learning outcomes for this project and what is the metric by which you are going to test whether or not the learning goals were achieved? Otherwise, you know, you're just throwing slime at your kid, desperately hoping it'll entertain them for 10 minutes while you get any time to yourself to make dinner. And that's fine, but that's not an educational toy, but they're selling it to you like it's an educational toy. Isn't it weird how all the educational toys are the weird, loud, goopy, annoying toys you would never buy usually? But they're educational now. So before we get to STEAM, which is an educational teaching style with a specific set of student outcomes and goals, we have to talk about STEM, which like funnily enough is not that. STEM is not a way to teach science, technology, engineering, and mathematics classes. STEM, it's rooted in immigration policy, which is, I don't know, that's kind of interesting. You can pin this on George W. Bush in the early 2000s who like revamped or you could say destroyed public education with the No Child Left Behind Act but also he talks a lot about the importance of making sure highly trained immigrants don't come and take jobs that Americans could not fill which seems like an odd way to phrase that. Like, I understand specifically, as a matter of national security, you want to have citizens who are highly trained and technically skilled and can do jobs and make inventions that can keep our country globally competitive. I understand that that is important. It's just a weird way to phrase it as as immigration policy. It's like, well, no, 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 we don't want highly trained, technically skilled people to come here and become citizens. We want those to be our own people. It's like, why, why not both? But I understand it. And this is actually how most countries talk about STEM. You, you can read about it on Wikipedia if you want. If you go to the .gov website on our STEM policy, that's what you'll see. STEM in itself is not a way to teach those classes. STEM is making sure those classes get taught by providing funding to make sure all schools offer these classes at the elementary school level all the way up to the high school level. Uh, schools can apply for government grants in order to like form robotics clubs or get computers in the classrooms, all that stuff. So STEM by itself is not a way to teach STEM classes. It is just an identification of the government's interest in ensuring that we have a scientifically literate population and we can be globally competitive. That's what STEM is. It has nothing to do with how the courses are taught. When you tell people about STEAM, sometimes they'll laugh at it. The person who knows that STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math and they're like, so you're just gonna add art? And then you say, no, STEAM is about the arts and humanities. And they say, well, isn't that just a liberal education? If you're doing all the science and all the arts and humanities, that's just all the things. And I do think that's funny, but that's not what STEAM is. So what STEAM is, is a pedagogical approach to teaching STEM courses. It takes the critical thinking skills and the creative problem solving skills you, you use in the arts and humanities, and it uses those in STEM education. So it's a way to design a science course that uses critical thinking and problem solving skills. A common complaint people my age have about their science and math education in high school is that it was just memorizing fact after fact after fact and there was no understanding requirement. It was like if you memorize the science fact, you got an A in science class. And STEAM 
is an attempt at rectifying that. STEAM wants to teach you how to understand science, how to be scientifically literate, a thing that I think is very important, but we'll get into it. But that is one of the reasons people laugh when you say STEAM. It's because they don't really understand what it is yet. The second type of person who laughs when you talk about STEAM, there's a very specific type of person who thinks that they are like morally superior, that they are a better person because they study a STEM topic over everyone else who's decided to do anything creative. And I just, I can't believe these people exist. Like it's so embarrassing, it's like pathetic. The reason I bring this up is because that type of person who thinks they're, they're better than everyone else because they have an engineering degree also has never read a book in their life. So they have very poor media literacy skills. So when I go on to criticize STEAM education, which is a thing I'm going to do, I don't want them to misinterpret this video as me saying arts and humanities are bad because that couldn't be further from the truth. I'm a huge proponent of the importance of a liberal education, like art, math, science, humanities, all of it's very important to be a well-rounded, educated person. Okay. So let's talk about STEAM. I mentioned earlier that people of my generation complain about their education because it was like rote memorization. And that's kind of how science was taught when I was a kid. It's just like, Kepler did this. And so now we know how planets work. And then Newton did this. And now we know how calculus works. And it's just like, that is not a good description of science. And it's related to the way people talked about science when I was a child. Adults would like look children in the face in the 90s and be like, oh, you're creative, how fun, you're gonna live in poverty for the rest of your life, but go have an arts degree. And then they would say like, oh, you're smart? Go be a scientist. Like the options were creative or smart, which is so insulting to everyone involved because obviously artists have to be smart and also, Science is one of the most creative acts that exists, and it's so stupid for people to be like, you know, scientists, they, they don't think, they don't think in the open box, they just do math, or they're not creative at all, like, that's such a stupid thing to say. STEAM wants to rectify that, because STEAM takes this creative problem-solving approach to teaching science. The way actual science works is obviously a creative endeavor. Like you look at the data, you look at the facts, and you have to envision a solution to that problem that matches all the facts and matches all the data and gives you an understanding of how the world works. I can't state this enough. One of the most creative endeavors a human can do is, is to do science, okay? Think of what you learned in high school. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, right? You have that memorized, but what does that mean? Did you learn what it means or did you just memorize that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell? Like imagine you want an explanation for how human cells have something inside of them that looks a lot like a bacteria that has its own genome that's different from like your DNA and the nucleus of your cell. How did that happen? How? Think about it. Use your creative problem solving skills. How can you go from single celled organism to somehow having something inside that looks like a bacteria? It's one of the coolest ideas in science. I really like talking about that one, but that's not what this video is about. When I first heard about STEAM, I was like, this is brilliant. Like this is the most important thing that we could do to improve science education is to teach science how it actually is. Science is not Oh, here's the fact. Oh, I discovered this fact. Oh, I discovered this fact. It's all of this information that you have to sift through and study and understand and put the pieces together like a little puzzle. Teaching science as a creative act, great idea. Like think about the Bohr model of the atom. When you learned that, you probably sat in an eighth grade like physics class and they were like, here are the energy levels. Calculate the energy level at N equals two. And then you just wrote it down. What if instead someone was like, well, here are the facts, right? They know that atoms are neutrally charged, right? The, the nucleus of an atom has a positive charge. Surrounding it are these little boys called electrons that have negative charge. They know that when they look at different chemical elements, they see spectra, different wavelengths of photons being emitted. How can you take all of those pieces of information and know what an atom looks like? How did Bohr come up with quantized energy? How? 
what a brilliant solution to this problem. And you walk them through the steps. Why does it have to be quantized little shells? Why does it have to be specific wavelengths of photons emitted? Just what a great way to teach that rather than just like, here it is, here's the Bohr model, calculate n equals two, please. Great idea. STEAM education is a great idea. You know, um, but however, uh, let's talk about the bad. My biggest issue with STEAM education is actually my issue with most hot like buzzword education ideas, which is that the researchers have developed this idea. When you talk about creativity and science, people remember the science better. They remember the scientific method better. They're able to have better scientific literacy skills. Like later they can read articles about science and understand what it was happening better because of the way they were taught these ideas. And then that moves all the way to the classroom teacher. And how that appears in the classroom is often very different from how it appears in the research. And there's a bunch of reasons for that. And one of the reasons is like education research lag. So you have these researchers who work in academia applying for funding and grants and doing these projects with teachers, with students in classrooms, and then they write up a report, right? They write up some papers, maybe they present at a conference, but how does that information travel all the way to the teacher? The teacher could get the paper from the researcher and she could read it, um, but is she trained on reading scientific documents? Probably not. Like, you, you become a teacher and you get your master's of education, but you're not really learning education research, you're learning how to teach, how to do an education, right? So if she reads the paper, it's going to take her a lot of time to understand when is she supposed to do this? So teachers make like, what, $47,000 a year. They work 7.30 to 5.30. They have to develop lesson plans. They have to develop homework assignments. They have to grade homework assignments. They have to answer the 75 emails from parents who are like, why did my daughter get a 9.7 out of 10 on this assignment? You know, and then also they have to teach for seven hours a day. All of that in the day. When do they have time to read scientific literature on education? They don't, right? Maybe during the summer, except teachers don't get paid during the summer. I, I'm against people working for free, so they should not. But even if they wanted to read literature in the summer, they usually have to get other jobs because rent doesn't stop in the summer because you don't get paid during the summer. Do you know what I mean? So teachers getting this information directly from the scientists is not as easy as it sounds. Like, I don't want them to work for free, so when should they do that? Do you know what I mean? Of course, the academics could be responsible for disseminating their, their information to the teachers, but they're also not paid for that. They apply for a grant, and usually it's like, here's the money to do the research, and that's it. So on their own time, they have to write up the research and present the research. Are they also supposed to develop a workshop that they can give to high school teachers and then they're supposed to travel the country? Talk? They don't have time to do that. Also, they should not be working for free. Look at me telling teachers and academics to stop working for free. Like that's ever going to happen. Stop working for free. Stop it. It's bad to do that. It's whatever. Anyway, the academics also don't have the time or the money to get this information. So there's this huge gap. If you get your master's of education, you will learn the latest tools and the latest ideas, but then you just go straight to the workforce. You don't go back to school. Like you're required by states, depending on the state, to do a certain number of workshops and all this stuff, but you don't go back to school and start over. So there is a lag time between research being done in, in academia and that research appearing in the classroom, okay? This gap, though, unfortunately, is filled with people trying to profit off the lack of communication between these two groups. You have a bunch of scammers who are like, hey, teacher who makes $47,000 a year, give me $1,200 for this course on STEAM education. And then they just email out like a bunch of PowerPoint slides and stuff. That's, that sucks. Like the teachers want to help the students. And so they, they look for information and it's just like scammers taking their money. And I mean, not all of these people are scammers. You also have a bunch of like bossy boss boss babes who are like, I used to be an elementary school teacher, but now I make money on Instagram selling courses. And like, they're not professionally trained researchers. They're not, they are not the experts who teachers should be getting advice from. Maybe they're not scammers, but 
a lot of it's just really bad information. I'm just going to play one. One of the things I'd first like to introduce you to is using pipe cleaners in your classroom. They're not just for little kids anymore. Pipe cleaners are great teaching instruments for so many different ways. As I talk and I give direct instruction to my students, I know that they're not always going to want to look at my face or the notes that I have on the board. And at times, instead of looking out the window, I would prefer for them to be looking at what I'm doing that I don't necessarily need to be paying a lot of attention to, but that what I'm doing is related to what we're learning about. So right now, you and I are learning about people and teaching STEAM. So I'm making a little person. And maybe if you have a pipe cleaner at your house, you might be following making the little person. But if you give your students the pipe cleaners and they make what you're making, then they have a tangible connection. Now, I don't think this woman is a scammer. But saying you're teaching STEAM techniques and then your technique, <laughs> air quotes, I'm so sorry, your technique is to do the exact same science lesson you would have done except hand all the children pipe cleaners is not STEAM. STEAM is not adding art and pipe cleaners are not art in that context. That's just a fidget spinner. STEAM is taking the approaches that people do to teach art and doing it in a science class. You can't give the same lesson. You have to redo your science lessons and approach science as a topic in a creative and critical thinking problem solving way. Handing everyone pipe cleaners is not doing a STEAM education and I can't believe she sold this class for money. There, there of course could be a reason you hand out pipe cleaners and be like, you just do something with your hands while you watch me talk about science. But that's not STEAM education. That's just definitively not STEAM education. You don't know what you're talking about and you're selling a class. This is like 20 years old. I don't, I'm sure she's not selling this anymore, but it's still on YouTube. This is the problem, right? There is research and there are people who work on the ground and there is a lack of communication with the two that is just filled with nonsense which is why I think it's not great that we are implementing STEAM right now because the teachers, I don't think, based on what I've seen, based on the courses and things that are being taught and recommended, I don't think they know what STEAM is yet. Of course, handing everyone a pipe cleaner and saying you're doing a STEAM doesn't really affect how the course is taught. Like, you're still just teaching it the same way it was taught before, which is not great, but I mean, it's not like you're making worse outcomes for your students. However, my biggest problem with this widespread adoption of STEAM is how I see teachers and schools talking about STEAM. Because the thing about public education is that it is not job training. STEM talks about how to be globally competitive, we need to produce strong technical adults, right? But that is not how you teach the class. You don't teach calculus and imply to all the students that the only way they'll ever be successful in life is if they pass calculus and they go on to be a STEM career and they keep us globally competitive. That's not what STEM says. STEM does not tell you how to teach the STEM classes. STEAM wants to tell you how to teach the STEM classes, but people are taking the job search rhetoric about STEM and using it in the classroom. Just like the 21st century workforce is gonna need highly trained STEAM people, we gotta do STEAM because we don't know what the job force will be like in 20 years and it's just like, I love teachers, I really do. Do we think teachers should be giving job hunting advice? No, no. We love teachers, but the traditional path of the teacher is like they get their master's and then they become a teacher and they've done like one job interview in their whole life. Like your average teacher has worked at their school for 17 years. Do you want your 15 year old son to go talk to someone like Mr. Rodriguez, who's the best AP English teacher in the state and say, hey, Mr. Rodriguez, I know 17 years ago you had one job interview. Can you tell me about like what employment is like and what a career is like and what kind of job I should get? We love Mr. Rodriguez. He's a great teacher, but he has no idea. He should not be giving job hunting advice to children because he, he doesn't know that and we should not expect him to. He knows English and he knows how to teach English and that's what he should be doing. Have you ever been job hunting and someone 30 years older than you is like, let me tell you what I'd do. Get your suit on, you know what I mean? 
if you have not been job hunting, like traditional first time out of college job hunting in 20 years, you have no idea what it's like and you should not be giving advice. And the way STEAM education is presented by educators is like, we don't know what jobs are going to be like. We have to prepare them. And I just, how can you prepare them if you don't know what it's going to be like? And also you haven't had a job interview in 17 years. This is not your job. Public school is not job training. Like, why not just sell all the elementary schools to Amazon Fulfillment Centers and they can just go to the elementary school slash Amazon Fulfillment Center and get to work right away? Public school is about education. It is not job training and it should not be. Otherwise, the capitalists win. Okay, we want the children to learn the science so they can be good citizens, so we can be globally competitive, so they can make an informed choice on what career path they want to go to. It is not the job of the teacher, the high school teacher who has not applied for a job in 30 years to tell your 15 year old son how to get an engineering job because they do not know, okay? It is crazy to, to put that on them. It is crazy to suggest that they should, they should make predictions about the workforce. No, no, STEAM education is not about the workforce. STEAM education is a way to teach science and math. It just paints this like really desperate picture in my brain of like a teacher getting trained up on STEAM and every time a seven-year-old student is like, I love drawing, they just pivot them into like, you know, sometimes computer scientists have to make GUIs. That's kind of artistic. You should go do that. Like imagine how devastating it is for like a child interested in art. Every time they're like, I would love to write a play. They're just pivoted into like, you know where writing is important? Technical writing for technical manuals. You know, some people with English degrees can get jobs at like law firms to write technical manuals. How about that? Like the devastation of taking a child, showing interest in a creative field and just fucking pivoting them every time. Just like, oh, you like singing? You know, you could sing while you work the oil fields. They wear headphones. No one would be able to hear you. Isn't that great? Like maybe you should go into that, you know, technical. Finally, this is my very selfish reason for saying this is a bad implementation of STEAM education, which is that I think art is important. I want children who want to do art to get to do that. I want the seven-year-old right now to write a book or a video game or a movie 25 years from now so that I can read or play or watch that movie. I think art is good, hot take, and I want children who are interested in that to be encouraged to do that. And I want us as a society to value that art. And if we take every single kid and we hard pivot them into steam, because it's kind of art, there's kind of art in there, that's real bad. I don't like it. I want kids to be able to do art and I want everyone to realize how good it is. We all like watching movies. If we get rid of all the artists, we won't have any movies. I mean, we already don't. It's just sequel after sequel after sequel. Imagine Jurassic Universe. We're gonna have to watch that. My biggest fear with the way I see Steam being pushed into schools is that people misunderstand it. People think it has art. STEAM does not have art. STEAM is a way of teaching STEM courses to be like creative, problem solving. We already talked about it, but the, it is not teaching art. Teaching art and humanities is separate from STEAM. But my worry is that six years from now, when a school is deciding whether to cut the art program or the STEAM program, they're gonna look at the STEAM program and be like, eh, there's art in there. That's fine. Just throw away all the arts, just do STEAM and that's bad. I have a fundamental belief that a liberal public education should be free and easy to get for every single person in our society. And you know, civics and calculus and gym class and art class and physics class should all be held to high standards to make citizens who are media literate and scientifically literate and they have a good base founding to go on and do the career that they want to do and that includes art and I'm really worried that this incorrect implementation of STEAM is just going to shut out art funding and that would be devastating. Of course the solution to this problem is to pay teachers more and pay them for the summer so that they could attend workshops that we pay academics to teach during the summer. Just like more money for everyone so that there is time, money equals time, for these people to learn how to correctly implement STEAM into their science classrooms. 
that's the solution. But like, we'll see. It's fine. So I love education research. Before I went into physics, I was getting my master's of education. I was teaching at a public high school, like a physics class. And after I finished my master's of education, I wanted to do education research. Like what is the best way to teach science? But instead I went and did physics instead. Dumb. I know, who cares about physics? Because I think what is the best way to teach science is a very interesting question. Because if you want science, to improve and move forward, you need a good founding of science education. And what is the best way to teach science? What is the research we can do to discover how to reach the maximum amount of people and make sure they understand how to think critically and scientifically? And when they read a science article, they can tell right away if it's garbage because, because they have good scientific literacy skills. How do we do that? What an interesting question. The problem is that, like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The real bad is that it doesn't matter. Zero percent of this matters. This research doesn't matter. If you are lucky enough to live in a good school district and you send your kids to a safe, happy school with teachers who are paid a living wage and the district has decided they want to implement STEAM education because it's really important for the workforce of the 21st century or whatever, all that means is that on Tuesdays your second grader is going to attend an hour-long class where they play with Legos and do an engineering project. I'm not saying the engineering with Legos is a bad project, it's totally fine. It's just like in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter because Republicans have been destroying the public education system in America for 50 years. You can draw a direct line from Ronald Reagan's attack on college students protesting the Vietnam War to your student loan debt. Before Reagan was the governor of California, college tuition in the state was free. His goal was to end government spending on public colleges, and he was very successful. The United States is fighting a war which the students in the United States don't believe in. When we set out to try and meet, in cooperation with the university, the financial problem of this state, recognizing the need to keep the university at its high level, we intended to meet with them around a table Quietly, when I say we, I mean the people of our administration, the financial people, the budget department, to see how the university, which is a large share of the general fund spending, how they could cooperate with us to help us meet this financial problem and not harm the quality of education. And within 24 hours, we were being attacked uh, by these people uh, as if we had laid down an ultimatum and we were out to destroy education. And we were out to destroy education. You can draw a direct line from George Bush passing the No Child Left Behind Act in 2001 to the reduction of public school funding in every single lower income community in America. You ever wonder why you were so good at math in high school and then you go to college and you have no idea how to study and you just failed out of the math class you took? It's because No Child Left Behind lowered the education standards in every single school in America. You weren't so smart. The government specifically prevented the teachers from providing you with an education. You were robbed of your education and in return, you just got a 3.5 GPA. President George W. Bush. And we owe the children of America a good education, and today begins a new era, a new time in public education in our country. As of this hour, America's schools will be on a new path of reform and a new path of results. The Trump administration passed through school choice reform, which was so far screamingly successful as a way to funnel funding from public schools into expensive, privatized, unregulated schools, in air quotes, for rich kids. The goal, the goal, the stated goal, which they say aloud, is to get rid of public school education altogether. And I would like your, your views on uh, the relative advantage of measuring, uh, doing assessments, and using them to measure proficiency or to measure, measure growth? Thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, I think if, if I'm understanding your question correctly around proficiency, I would, I would also um, correlate it to competency and mastery so that you, each student is measured according to the um, advancement that they're making in each subject area. Well, that's growth. A, at, that's not proficiency. So in other words, the growth they're making is in growth. The proficiency is if an arbitrary reached, if standard. If they've reached a level, the proficiency is if they've 
reached a, a like third grade level for reading, et cetera. Is no, I'm talking about the debate between proficiency and growth and yes. what, what your thoughts are on that. Well, I was just asking to clarify then. Well, this is, this is a subject that is, has been debated in the education community for years. But it surprises me that you don't know this issue. Can you say a factual statement, like the Republican stated goal is to end public school education. People are like, they would never do that. We would never let them do that. But they're saying that's what they want to do and that's what they're going to do. If you went to college in California in 1970 and your total bill for all four years of education was $1,400 and I told you, hey, in 40 years, your grandson is going to go to the same school you did, get the same degree you did, and he's going to pay $6,000. Would you say, no, that's crazy. We would never let that happen because they said that that's what they wanted and that is what's happened. When people show you who they are, believe them. Yes, absolutely. If a person says to you, I'm selfish or... I'm mean, or I am unkind. Or I'm crazy. Or I'm cra Believe them. They know themselves much better than you do. Mm -hmm. Listen to what people are saying. And it's actually super weird how vocal Republicans are about hating education. It's weird, right? That's what they say out loud. Republicans specifically hate children and don't want them to have an education. The federal government has provided money and sent it to states for low-income children to be able to have access to food, which they would not otherwise have access to, and the Republican governors of those states have decided, like, no, they would rather have the kids be hungry. They don't want the money. The money is just sitting there. They don't want it. They would rather the children be hungry. Unless, like, you know, they could just get rid of child labor laws. Maybe instead of reading Captain Underpants, the 10-year-old could just go work at McDonald's. I guess, like, children yearn for the mines. The Republican stated plan of, you know, ending public school education and making children go to work and making sure that they don't have access to food is in sharp contrast to the Biden government. At the very start of his administration, Biden had this America family plan and it wanted to provide comprehensive paid leave. You know, like every other country in the world, after you have a baby, you get paid leave to spend time with the baby and make sure you don't die from sepsis. It offered universal preschool for all three and four year olds, just like we have public school for five to 18. And this is a huge thing for me. Problems students have later on in their education career can be fixed by attending public school because they would have access to a breakfast and lunch. They would have access to trained educators who could recognize signs of them like needing glasses or needing early intervention for walking or needing early intervention for reading or all of those things could be provided by people who care for children and got those jobs to do that. By the way, here's what the uh, Republican vice presidential nominee thinks about universal preschool. Universal preschool is literally the one thing we could do that would cost very little but improve the lives of the vast majority of Americans by getting rid of daycare costs, by providing early intervention, by giving food to children who do not have access to it. And you know, there was other stuff like free community college for two years, uh, getting rid of student debt, increasing the Pell Grant program, but you know, every single Republican refused to vote for it. So all the good things were stripped and it was just taken off the table. It's weird. It's like Republicans vocally say that they hate everything that's good for families and children and vote against it because they would rather the kid be poor and stupid and hungry, which is weird. It's like they're not interested in education at all. But you know what they are super interested in? Children's genitals. <sighs> this is really hard to talk about because it just... It's so disgusting on a visceral level, but you cannot talk to a Republican about education for more than a few minutes before they start talking about children's genitals and what bathroom they use. And shouldn't they hire someone to check all the girls' genitals before they're allowed to play basketball? Go to a school board meeting and there are three people there who are scared of books and also a really weird guy who just wants to talk about children's genitals and he wants to have access to them so he can just check it, you know, just in case. 
I just, these people need to be on a list. Like, these people shouldn't be allowed 200 feet of any space where children are expected to be. It's shocking that this is their platform. Their platform is, I hate children, but also I'm super interested in their genitalia. Hot take, you know, but maybe we don't let people who are super interested in inspecting children's genitals make any decisions about what happens to children. Maybe they should be on a list somewhere. Maybe we should check their hard drives because I, I just, I don't have words. I don't have words. Let's talk about Project 2025 and the future of education under Republican governments, the things they say they are going to do. I'm going to read from an Education Week posting of it, but you can just read their wackadoo 900-page document if you want. Uh, the first thing they want to do is, you know, get rid of the Department of Education. They specifically want to close the Department of Education. Voting for a Republican is voting to end public school education. They want to implement universal school choice, a thing they've already done, where you can just funnel federal government money that's supposed to be invested in the community, it's supposed to be invested in children's education, and just give it to random grifters that can suddenly become tax-free education organizations. They want to get rid of Title I. Title I is a thing that was implemented in 1964 by LBJ. It is uh, because we have this terrible system in America where public schools are funded by local and state taxes, schools that live in poor communities are going to be worse and be underfunded compared to other schools. So Title I allows federal funding to bridge that gap and make sure all schools are on a level playing field. It has been in place since the 60s. 63% of schools are only functioning because Title I exists. Republicans want to close public schools. So they want to get critical race theory and gender ideology excised from curriculum, things that are not in curriculum. But the thing about this is like where like a librarian reading that I have a dream children's book to a bunch of first graders counts as critical race theory. And so they just want to get rid of that. They just want to get rid of talking about Martin Luther King in school, but like do that with everything. Suddenly talking about unions in a high school history class counts as critical race theory. Talking about slavery counts as critical race theory. You get it. They can just remove anything they don't want from education because they want you to be stupid. That's the goal. But don't worry. They're still obsessed with children's genitals. Project 2025 proposes defining sex under the federal landmark sex discrimination law to mean only biological sex recognized at birth. Instead of, you know, talking about what the best way to teach science is and how can we get more kids involved in learning about technology, they just want to define biological sex. All I want to do is talk about science and learn science, and they want to destroy everything I love. If you vote for Republicans, you are voting to end public school education. Sometimes when I talk about politics in my videos, I get comments that are like, stick to science, stay in your lane, science isn't political. And I just have to laugh because that's such a stupid thing to say. But also, I've just shown you, science is political. It's factually incorrect to say science isn't political. The people who get to do science got good science educations. The people who get good science educations go to good schools. Republicans want to close public schools, which means you don't get to do science. So many women, people of color, queer people have to turn down jobs that just happen to be in states that are hostile to their human rights. If you get into the best school in America to study curing cancer, but in that state you're not considered a human being. You don't get to go to that state. How can we get to Star Trek if more than half the people who want to do science are not allowed to do science? Science is political because everything is political. Anyway, I don't want to be a doomer. I love America. I really do. There are so many great things about the American education system. For example, I love how our liberal education system allows children all the way up to 18 to have a broad range of interests. Other countries force 12 year olds to decide what career they want to do and qualify for an exam or they just never get to go to the college they want to. In America, we have the freedom to follow the career path we want, you know, right now. So here's just a list of things we can do to maintain this for the future. 
The first is to vote, you know, write down the ballot, vote for public school education. Only one party wants to close the Department of Education and close 63% of public schools. So just vote for the other one. Also, you know, vote in local elections. When people run for school board, look up when that is on like the random day. Look up when that election is and call the people running for your school board. Ask them how they feel about STEAM education. And if they start giving you Republican talking points, you know, tell your friends. Post on Instagram and Facebook and say, and just say, this weirdo wants to close public schools and he's running for school board. Don't vote for this guy and get a sign. Get the sign for your local election for the guy that knows what STEAM education is and put it in your yard. You have to be just as vocal as these wackadoos are. And this is a big ask, but I think we should all make an effort to go to our local school board meetings. Because the thing about these freaks is that they are absolutely a minority. These losers drive from town to town, showing up at school board meetings and crying into a microphone about how Ramona Quimby, age eight, shouldn't be in the library because she used a pronoun and I'm scared no one else is there like that insane woman is the only one that showed up but if we were there to be like whoa it sounds like you need to go to therapy do you even live here do you even have children here let's stop listening to that woman and let's talk about steam education this would just go away because this is like one loser driving across massachusetts do you know what i mean you see if you're there and you're vocal you can just shut them down they are a minority And you know, finally, if you're at the school board meeting, when one of these weirdos just walks up to the microphone and starts talking about children's genitalia, just have an appropriate response. Oh my God, what the fuck? Why are you talking about children's genitals? Oh my God, there are children here. Why are you at a school board meeting talking about children's genitals? Do you think this is appropriate? Get out of here and then take a picture of them and call the police because these people need their hard drives checked.